welcome back to the channel guys today guys we do my asian cup day four review guys we're gonna start first with the south korea three bahrain one guys so for this game man south korea man they were amazing this game they were fantastic and i want to shout out to kangi lee who i thought had an amazing game today he was fantastic as for bahrain they were good i think they were good value for this game and they made things competitive for south korea they south korea had to really work hard for this one it wasn't like a routine win as many of us expected them to and I think Bahrain, for me, they were playing very defensive. Of course, they know Bahrain. We know Bahrain couldn't compete with South Korea. So the idea for them was to frustrate them. And South Korea had to resort to long ball. Resort to long ball. And the first goal, man, was a great goal there from Wong. Um, I believe they missed a sitter beforewards in my highlights I saw. By the way, I believe this is the early kickoff. So I, I, I wasn't able to watch the full. I wasn't able to watch the game. So I tried to watch the comprehensive highlights for this game. And then obviously the second, the and then the equalized. The equalized there. The Bahrain goal that scored South Korea, man, defensively was shambles. They should have done way better there defensively. I wasn't, I don't know what they were doing. And uh, shout out to Kim and Jay, man. Shout, Kim and Jay made a really good pass over the top for Hank, uh, um, King E. Lee. And Lee scored, man. Lee was clinical on the day. And then the third goal was superb. So I think the second goal was amazing. I don't quite remember exactly. Uh, and yeah, man. So And then Son missed a late chance. And so, yeah, for South Korea, man, they got the job done. They won three goals to one. And for Bahrain, man, it's going to be difficult for them, um, you know. And now they have uh, they have to play. What is it called? They have to play um, Jordan Malaysia. So I think for Bahrain, they're in a good position. As I, as long as they can beat Malaysia, that will be good for them. They can at least get third, and you know. And then it's going to come down to a Bahrain Jordan game to probably decide who's going to come in second place. So shout out to South Korea, man. Shout out to South Korea. Big big win there for. Uh, Jurgen, Jurgen Klinsmann, and um, I just think for South Korea, man, my only criticism for South Korea is that I I think um, I think the other I think there's really nothing to say, but I think um, they have to be a bit better defensively. I think against the higher quality teams, if they do that kind of defense, they're going to get expo they're not going to be able to um, you know only concede one goal. So yeah, Bahrain they just didn't really offer a whole lot going forward. South Korea, on the other hand, were amazing. So shout out to South Korea, man, got the job done. Moving on to the other game. The second game we have today, the second kickoff, which was, of course, uh, Indonesia 1, Iraq 3. Indonesia, man, Indonesia weren't that bad. They were not that bad because coming into this tournament, a lot of people said Indonesia uh, wouldn't really do much. And, of course, Iraq and Indonesia had obviously played against each other. And the, I think they, play, they played against each other the World Cup qualifying cycle. And Iraq smashed Indonesia, I believe it was 5-1. This time around, though, it wasn't 5-1. It ended 3-1. And for Iraq, man, they were just amazing that day. That first goal from Ali, man, Mohamed Alani, was a fantastic goal, man. Fantastic goal. Um, amazing, amazing goal there. And then the second goal, man, they scored just the second goal. The equalizer for Indonesia was great, great individual skill there. Ferdinand scoring there. And then the second goal from Iraq, man, Rashid, man, scoring a nice, nice goal there just before halftime. Really destroying the Indonesian momentum. And then they had another goal, I think, in the second half that got disallowed. Hussein scored the third goal. He came off the bench, Amin Hussein. And yeah, you could see, man, um, he scored just minutes coming on, man. Um, he came on and scored um, just 15 minutes later, man. So for Indonesia, man, they were good on the day. It's just that I feel like for Indonesia, they just couldn't compete. Iraq just have way too much quality in the final third, and Indonesia didn't. And you look at the stats in particular, they had eight shots, one on target. Whereas Iraq had 15 shots, 5 on target, 6 big chances in this. Iraq missed a lot of big chances in this game. They should have been more clinical. And um, like I said, man, Iraq should have won this game by like, of like, you know, 3 or 4 goal margin. They were just that much better. As for Indonesia, they just didn't have enough quality in the final third. You could see they struggled to create high quality chances. And that's what ultimately hurt them in the end. And so, um, Hussein didn't really have to do much. And for the goalkeeper, man, Sotardi, I don't think he had a really good game of goalkeeper. I think he could have done better for some of those goals. And yeah, for Iraq, man, look out for Iraq, guys, because I think Iraq's a team that you don't want to play against in the quarterfinal. You don't want to play against in the knockout stage because I think this team can do something. I think this team have what it takes to um, make things difficult. And so, yeah, shout out to Iraq, man. Shout out to Iraq. Finally, the final game we have here for today is um, uh, Malaysia nil Jordan 4. And I got to owe an apology to um, uh, Jordan. I said Jordan would finish bottom of the group. I have to humbly apologize because, my goodness me, man, Jordan were really good on the day. They were fantastic on the day, and they proved me wrong massively. Malaysia, on the other hand, even though the score was really bad, I don't think they were that bad. And I'll explain why a bit. 
Because for me, I think in this game, Jordan were just clinical with their chances. Malaysia weren't clinical whatsoever. And you can see right here, guys, that Malaysia actually created a decent amount. You know, eight shots, three on target. It's just the difference is they were not clinical with their chances. Whereas Jordan, on the other hand, were clinical with 14 shots, eight on target, and three big chances. Because like I said, guys, if you look at the stats, Malaysia actually committed more fouls. They had more corners. They had more accurate passes. But ultimately, the most important thing is the goals. And yeah. Malaysia, man, defensively were just awful. They were just awful defensively. Mardi, man, scored a, that goal for the first goal, man. Great, great goal there. Uh, then the second goal, man, was scored by Taremi from the penalty spot. Uh, very, very a clumsy challenge. I think it was committed by Davis. I think Davis took, uh, took him down in the box. And then he scores, of course. And then 32nd minute, Mardi scores. And then I think, you yeah, know, and then, and then there was a late spell of dominance. Malaysia were actually really good in the second half. They created a lot of good chances. Jordan were kind of sitting back. And then Jordan scored that dagger, man. Alton Rami scored in the 85th minute. A very, very nice chip over the goalkeeper. And yeah, for Jordan, man, they were just amazing the day. A comfortable win. As for Malaysia, man, I think it's pretty much over for them. I think it's really much over for them because they're in a minus four goal difference. And they have to play against... Because let's be real, they're not getting any against South Korea. So their best hope is really against Bahrain. And that's going to be very difficult for them because, especially with the goal difference, man, I think it's fair to say Malaysia is probably going to exit in the group stage of the... I think it's, I think it's going to be a tall task for Malaysia to do something. As for Jordan, man, they're in a great position. I think they're going to at least get third in the group. And now it's going to be interesting them in Bahrain for that second place ball. Because that's really the interesting thing with this group. Because I'm really curious to see who's going to get that second place. Because that was always a big talking point with this group. Is that who's going to get that second place between Jordan and Bahrain. Because they're kind of on the similar level. As for Malaysia, man... You got hell. Your you got it's 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 tough to tough pill to swallow because I think for me they weren't that bad as a score may have suggested, but they were just really bad defensively, and that's what ultimately let you down. And they just couldn't finish in the final third. That's uh, quite a shame because even if they had like scored like one or two goals, losing four two is way better than losing four nil, and would help well at least in their terms of goal difference. Because when you lose four nil, your chances of qualification is pretty much out the window. Like it's going to be very difficult. So. If Malaysia somehow qualify after a 4-0 defeat, I would be very, very surprised and very happy for them. You know, now obviously it's amazing for them to qualify for this tournament in the first place because I think they're one of the lowest ranked nations in this competition. So you have to give them full props for that. But as I said, though, this is a, probably a bridge too far for them. So, like I said, man, shout out to Jordan, man. I'm still not really... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still not really totally convinced on Jordan just yet because I do think that they're going to have to... Because like I said before, I, I do think Malaysia... Did have some good chances, and I do think Jordan is going to have to improve upon their game if they want to convince me they're the real deal. So let's see what they do against Bahrain, because if Jordan beats Bahrain, guys, then I think they'll be the real deal. Anyways, I think that's it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this quick little analysis of the three games. Real guys, tomorrow we'll be doing our live stream uh, to recap entire match day one, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys there. It's going to take place at around 5.15-ish p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.